Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with myself, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 4th of January 2021 and the time has just gone 11.54 GMT. And first things first, uh, Happy New Year to one and all. Uh, hope you had a nice uh, holiday uh, and um, things have gotten off to a fairly decent start. Uh, in 2021 and I think I speak for uh, for everybody uh, that we're glad to see the back of 2022. Um, so the kind of the topics that have been dominating trading this morning I mean it's just basically it's the same topics that have been dominating um, dominating the markets uh, and the back end of last year. Um, a couple of things a couple of things are doing the mix. Um, starting is a bit lower a bit lower today uh, but the British pound had a decent run uh, up until up until New Year's Eve, uh, on the kind of the final um, the, the final kind of signing off of the UK EU trade deal, avoiding kind of a no deal type scenario. That benefit is starting uh, in late December, so we're seeing a bit of a pullback today. The weakness in the US and the weakness in the pound is giving a bit of a, is, is also giving an added help uh, to the FTSE 100. Uh, what we're also seeing into the, into the mix um, is the kind of continued positivity uh, from U.S. markets. Um, U.S. stock markets, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500, uh, set all-time high, new all-time highs on New Year's and New Year's Eve. Um, we've had a kind of signing off of the stimulus package, $900 billion stimulus package over in the U.S. That translated into a positive session in Asia overnight, which spilled over here. In addition to that, uh, further good news on the uh, COVID-19 vaccine front. Uh, today, the 4th of January, uh, the vaccine developed by AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford um, has actually been, has, is, is uh, being rolled out as of today. So the kind of the continuation of, like, of a growing feeling uh, that the pharma sector is kind of taking the fight to COVID-19. Uh, on top of that, uh, broadly speaking, um, we the, the manufacturing PMI data that we saw from the from European countries, the Eurozone and the UK, uh, all showed growth uh, on the month. Um, the reports were looking nothing too exciting, but it shows that things are kind of continuing on in terms of rebounding nonetheless. Now, so for those of you who are familiar with the video, I did the usual usual structure whereby I'll run through the week ahead uh, and then I'll talk about the I cover the big markets, the big indices, the big currency pairs, and finally the big commodities. So first things first, turning off the week ahead. The weekend article can be found on our website, you go to cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under and then under latest news and uh, analysis. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we have the manu various manufacturing reports out of Europe, uh, well, well, China overnight and, and Europe this morning. Um, we have these, there's the service, we have the service figures um, coming out um, on Wednesday. Um, looking ahead to tomorrow um, and third and Tuesday. We're going to have a quarterly update from Morrison's and Next. Uh, so basically, the, uh, the well-known retailers, both the, the supermarket chain and the, and the fashion house, will post their uh, quarterly, quarterly numbers, which are given uh, uh, to give us an update of how they fared um, in relation to the you know should be uh, busy Christmas period. Uh, on Wednesday, we will have the um, the Federal Reserve minutes. Uh, from the most recent meeting in kind of mid-December. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to have the uh, global services PMI data coming out uh, on Wednesday. And uh, for countries like the UK, where, uh, where the service sector is far bigger than manufacturing, that's going to be closely watched. Uh, on Friday, we have the all-important US non-farm payrolls report. Um, just to let you know, uh, my colleague Michael Houston is going to be holding hosting a live webinar for that event, uh, and that can be found on our website. If you, go into, if you go under insights and then, and then webinars and events, you'll find the update and you can sign up for it here. Um, it, it's, it begins at 13.15 uh, GMT um, on Friday the 8th of January. So please feel free to sign up for that. And lastly, on Friday, uh, we also have a, the quarterly update from, from Marks and Spencer, the, um, the, um, the well-known British retailer. So once again, how they fared over the Christmas is going to be on what's tra on traders' minds. So as I mentioned, we had a solid start to, to the uh, um, European trading session. And uh, we can see here the FTSE 100 
uh, is higher on the session. We're not too far away from the highs that were achieved um, in the first day of back trading uh, after the Christmas break. Um, we've been trending higher the last few months, a nice upward trend. Obviously, the FTSE has been greatly lagging behind many of its, uh, of its likes, obviously, the DAX and the, and the US markets, which will come out to you in a moment. But nonetheless, the market's in a nice upward trend. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here, highs of, of, um, of early March in around 8,000, sorry, apologies, 6,891. Any move to the downside could find support uh, in around this area here, just kind of uh, 6,400. And if we go below that, we could look at, we could potentially be heading back down towards this area here in around, uh, in around 6,258. And this line, this support zone here, if you look at the lows of, of um, mid November, the lows of, of early December, it comes into that, that's, that's where the, um, that, that metric comes from in around 6,258. It also sort of coincides with this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. Now, if you just wait a minute here. Bear with me one second, I'll sort of just reshape my chair. Thank you very much. Coins average. Now on the 50 day moving average, we can see here on a few occasions that metric acted as both uh, support, resistance and support in the not too distant past. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it makes it like more likely that it'll be of importance in the future. So keep an eye out for the 50 day moving average and also is coincide inside that, 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 that area that area. Take a look now at the German market, the DAX. The DAX has set a new uh, all-time high today. So the, the German market has cleared the highs that we saw back in uh, back in February last year when the COVID-19 crisis was just about kicking off. We're currently um, well, back below 13,900. So give indication of how strong the DAX has been uh, in, in recent years. Uh, so we've been, we're continued to be in the kind of so solid upper trend. If you're depressed higher from here, the next kind of big numbers that I got for would be 14,000, a big psychological number. Uh, we're currently at 13,878. If we move lower, support could, could, could be found in this zone here in around 13,600. And if you go below that, we could can be looking heading back down towards kind of 13,200. And if you go below that, we could then be looking heading back down towards the kind of general 13,000 area. But also keep, keep an eye out for this metric here. Uh, this line here, uh, which comes into play uh, in at 13,033, so just north of the kind of big psychological number uh, of 13,000. Looking over what's going on over in the U.S., starting off with the Dow Jones, as I mentioned, we saw a record high being set uh, last Thursday on New Year's Eve. We're, we're the way things are shaping up in terms of the Dow Jones index futures, we're looking at set, setting a new record high. We're currently expecting the market to open around 30,774. Uh, if you continue to kind of move on higher from here, 31,000 will be the kind of next big number that traders will be looking out for to the upside. Uh, show you the floor from here, support could be found in around this zone here in around 30,000. 271 and if you go below that we could be looking heading back down towards 30,000 you know it's a big psychological number uh, and that's, that's kind of the next area that traders will be keeping an eye, keeping an eye out for and even if you go below 30,000 we could then be looking heading back down for this area here um, in around um, it's hidden away behind the, the metric uh, keep an eye out for 29,461 so we have to go, I, which basically kind of coincides with the lows of early December. Now, turning our attention to what's going on on the S&P 500, similar situation whereby a, a record high was achieved uh, on New Year's Eve. We're expecting further gains to be made. So we're currently expecting the S&P 500 to open at 3,774. Uh, it should be kind of broader uptrend continue from here. We could be looking at targeting 3,800. Uh, any pullbacks could find support from the kind of the lows of last week in around 3,724. Um, and if you have a fairly decent um, pullback, we could then look at heading back down towards this area here in around 3,600, kind of coinciding there, thereabouts with the lows of early December and uh, the lows of late November. Apologies, the lows of late December and also late November. 
Uh, turning our attention now to what's going on over the currencies, starting up with the pound dollar. As I mentioned at the top of the video, starting at a decent move to the upside last week uh, on the back of the kind of, fine, kind of finalization that the UK and the EU signed a trade deal. So we, we hit a, well, we, and some of those gains were initially continued into, into today's session, but they appear to have, have given back some of that ground. We, we, in today's session, we've hit you know, a fresh two and a half year high. I believe it's a 32 month high uh, that, was, that was set. So pound dollar is clearly in a very strong upward trend. If we continue to press on higher from here, and keep in mind we're currently trading in around one spot 3654. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting one spot 3792. Keep in mind that's a level um, that was last seen back in late April, uh, yeah, late April 2018. So keep an eye for one spot 37.92 to the upside. Uh, if you do you know, pull back lower from here, we could be looking heading back down toward this zone here. This area here, just north of 134, in around one spot 34.29. And if you go below that again, we could be looking heading back down toward this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, uh, just north of one spot 33. And you can see in a few occasions in the last few weeks um, that once the 50 day moving average has acted as support. Now, granted, it did trade a bit below it on, uh, on Monday, the 21st of December, but keep an eye out for that general zone uh, sh uh, as a potential area for support should we have a fairly sizable pullback in pound dollar. Now, sticking with the, uh, the theme of the week, uh, US dollar, we we'll take a look at euro dollar. Um, so euro dollar, similar, similar to, the, to pound dollar, has been a solid upward trend the last few weeks and months. Uh, in fact, uh, the highest that were achieved only recently were, once again, near, near, near enough, um, kind of about two and a half year highs. There were levels last seen in, I believe, I think it was May 20, 2018, the highs that we recently saw were, were achieved last then. So we're talking at levels uh, similar, similar to pound dollar, uh, we're looking at level last seen really since about April 2018. So similar situation, we're talking about two and a half year highs. So euro dollar is in a strong, strong upward trend. Uh, if we continue to move on higher from here, we could then be looking at heading up towards. We could then be looking at heading up towards the highs of May 28, March 2018, in around one spot 2480. Uh, any move to the downside could find support from the kind of this area here in around one spot 21.90, one spot 21.29, the lows of early December, oh, sorry, the lows of, of, of mid-December mid rather. And if you do break below that, we could then be looking heading back down to, to the lows of early December in at one spot 20.54. And if you go below that, we could then be looking heading down towards 120. That'll be kind of the next big psychological number uh, on, on the way down. What's interesting is that um, after the kind of the, the, the fresh two and a half year highs were achieved on Wednesday, on on Thursday last last week, New Year's Eve, we had a bit bullish. Well, this candle here that had the potential to be a bullish, rather bearish, rather a bearish uh, daily engulfing. But notice how the market bounced back today. We're well above the lows of the of the um, of the of, 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 of last Thursday. Um, the highs that we, we've achieved today and the current level that we are we're at, to, at now is well above the highs of the, of the open of the session. So it seems to me that, that, that the this seems to be a bit of a blip for the time being. And, and especially if you, if you take off the highs of Thursday, we can be more confident that the broader upward trend of the last few weeks and months is going to continue. Now I'll take a look uh, at commodities. If you're going to be trading, um, gold or any metals, keep an eye on what's going on with the US dollar. As we, as we just saw in pound dollar and euro dollar, the dollar has been fairly weak. We're talking the dollar index has been at its lowest level in about two and a half, two and a half years. So it's not, not a huge surprise that we've seen the push higher in gold today. Uh, gold is at its highest level since early November. We've been broadly been pushing higher, kind of higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. We've been an upward trend uh, basically for the last month. If we continue to move on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 1973, the highs 
at the highs of mid-November, which isn't too far away from the highs of early November, sorry, the highs of mid-September, rather, which, which is a bit higher than the highs of early November. So, if you, so keep an eye for 1973. And if we go beyond that, we can then be looking towards 2000, would be the next, next, big, uh, next big level to keep an eye for. If we do see a bit of a pullback in, uh, in the gold market, Support can be found from this yellow line here, the one really moving average in 1895. 1895 is just below the kind of you know, 1900, which is a big number. But also, if you notice that on a few occasions, we saw a bit of consolidation and we saw that, that metric not too long ago act as both support and also as resistance uh, in the last few weeks and months. So with that, the fact that the holiday moving average acted as support back in September. We saw some consolidation around it in October, and very recently it acted as resistance and support. So keep an eye out for that level. Uh, if you have a fairly decent sized move to the downside, support could be found from this red line here, the Trinity moving average in 1830. And lastly, coming on to today, um, for the market of the day, coming on to Brent crude oil and the cash market. Uh, keep an eye out, keep an eye out for um, OPEC plus headlines. The organization is meeting today um, in relation to in, in relation to demand output for February. Um, there is some talk that Russia want to want to increase supply again. Supply was increased um, from January onwards, but then again, you know, we haven't really heard much from Saudi Arabia, and they're sort of the de facto leader of OPEC. So keep an eye on, on that. But nonetheless, uh, today's um, today's um, oil market has, is off the highs of the session, uh, but it's still very much in the kind of wider upward trend uh, of the last few weeks and months. Uh, the, the high that was seen today was the highest level seen since March. So we're talking, you know, now going on kind of 10-month highs. So the market's in, in quite a decent, decent position. If it continues to press on higher from here, uh, we could be looking at targeting the highs of late February and 54 spot 28. Uh, any move to the downside could find support from the lows of you know just just you know Christmas week we roll up into Christmas in around uh, 49 spot 18 and if we go below that we could then be looking heading back down towards the lows of early December in around 46 spot 74. Uh, that's all from me this week. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.